As believers in Jesus Christ, I really don't think this coronavirus situation is a time to go into fear or panic. In fact, I think it's our time to shine. And I'd like to share a few scriptures and thoughts with you about what I think God might be saying to us at this time. We're going to jump straight into Matthew chapter 8. This story is about Jesus and it's from verses 23 to 27. It says, Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now, of course, the first thing we notice about this story is that the, the storm came suddenly, a little bit like the coronavirus. There, there were a few warnings, perhaps, with what was happening in China, but actually this thing came upon the world suddenly. Nobody expected it. And in the story here, the waves of the storm swept over the boat. And in some ways, I think that that's a picture of uh, our systems, the world systems. This storm that has hit now is sweeping over the boat. People are saying our economy can't cope with it. Our health systems can't cope with it. If we look at our personal lives, we're saying, will my immune system cope with it? And some people are worried that their immune system won't cope with it. So things are not holding up. But Jesus was sleeping. And while Jesus was sleeping physically, the reality is that the disciples were sleeping spiritually because they, they cried out to Jesus. And at first you would think, well, they did the right thing. They cried out to Jesus. But what they actually said was, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. You see, it wasn't a cry of faith. It was a cry of fear. We're going to die. And if we ask ourselves, why did the disciples feel like this? Perhaps it was because they were trusting in the boat more than they were trusting in Jesus. And Jesus' reply, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Jesus rebuked them. <laughs> and What do you do when Jesus rebukes you for your lack of faith because you've gone into fear? I know what I do. <laughs> I repent. I say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for trusting in other things. I want to choose to trust in you and I will refuse to fear. And of course, then Jesus calmed the storm. And I think sometimes we're praying that Jesus will take away the storm. But one thing I noticed from this story was that the disciples needed the storm to wake them up spiritually. And I believe that we all have an opportunity here to be in a much better state after the storm than we were before the storm. Don't forget that faith is your shield. And one of the things that's happening right now is that we're reading lots of news articles and we're hearing people say how bad things are going to get. And some of that might be true, but the more we feed on those things, uh, it's like our faith comes down and our fears and our worries and anxieties start to rise. But of course, Scripture says, do not be anxious about anything. And we need to make sure that we're filling our minds with the truth of God's word. I heard one preacher say that if your fire isn't burning right, then you must have put trash on it. And I think we need to recognise where we fed ourselves uh, on lies and panic and fear, when actually we need to be feeding ourselves on the truth of God's word. And, and that way our faith will be strong. And because our faith is a shield, faith is the most important thing we've got. So I want to encourage you to keep your faith levels high. You see, the fact is, as Christians, we're supposed to be standing on the rock that cannot be moved and cannot be shaken. We're not supposed to be hiding underneath a rock. And if we find that we're being shaken now, then 
let this be a warning to all of us because there's a much bigger shaking that's coming. If we just have a quick look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 to 27, it says this. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is creative things, created things, so that what cannot be shaken will remain. And of course, it's talking about a time when all created things will one day be removed. Everything will be shaken until only that which cannot sh be shaken will remain. And there are many creative created things that we take peace from. They give us a form of a peace, but it doesn't last and it can be easily shaken. And in John 14, 27, Jesus said this, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. And then he said, I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And of course, those who walk by faith in him alone can say what the psalmist said in Psalm 62, verse 6. Let's hold on to these words. It says, truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Let's pray together. Father, we just want to come before you right now and we just want to say that we're sorry for taking in uh, lies and panic and fear and allowing our faith to be shaken. Lord, we ask right now that you would strengthen us in that faith, then we thank you that we can stand upon you, the solid rock which cannot be moved or shaken. And I ask you, Father, to help me and to help everybody who's watching this video right now to shine brightly in this time of fear, that as believers we would be so different from those people in the world who have a reason to fear. They have a reason to fear death, we don't have a reason to fear death and therefore we don't have a reason to fear a virus. Would you help us to shine brightly so that others might see our reactions and our faith and that they might also put their trust in you and be delivered themselves from the fear of death and enter into eternal life, which is an everlasting relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen.